Hi guys, and thanks for joining me today. Today we're gonna to build an Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, an Amazon VPC using the VPC wizard. So essentially what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna create a VPC, we're going to create a couple of subnets, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch a NAT instance into the VPC, and we're also gonna explore the VPC configurations and attributes. So let's get started. So I'm on my AWS Educate account again, folks. And what I've done is I've clicked on services. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in just VPC here um, in the dashboard. And again, this is just, it brings up a quick action menu here. And you can see I'm gonna launch this VPC isolated cloud resources. And what I like about this screen, folks, is it gives us a kind of high level view of what's happening in my particular region. I can see I've got one VPC currently, and this is the default VPC in the account. I can see the number of, for example, subnets at the moment. I can see an internet gateway. I can see things like running instances, and I can see elastic IPs along with many, many other um, basically um, settings. So what I'm gonna show you is, in particular, for example, the elastic IPs, we're gonna see that this, this increases in just a moment when I launch this VPC wizard, and also we'll see that our running instances increase. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna now launch and create a new VPC of my own, rather than create resources and just put them into the default VPCs. I'm gonna take a little bit more control over what I'm doing here in the AWS cloud. So I'm not gonna select step one, this, uh, this first option here, this VPC with a single public subnet. I'm actually more interested in selecting a VPC with public and private subnets. So what I actually want to do is, I want to, I want to create a VPC, a virtual private cloud, with a public subnet, okay, and a private subnet. And what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm gonna create a public subnet with a NAT instance in there. And what this would allow is, if for example, in the future, I wanted to spin up maybe a database or some sort of instance that I wanted private away from you know, accessing from people from the internet, what this private uh, instance would allow is it would allow us to talk out through this NAT instance to talk potentially out onto the internet to potentially get some updates, okay? So essentially what I'm gonna do is using this wizard, it's gonna prov provide me with a VPC with a slash 16 network, and it's then gonna create two subnets a public subnet and a private subnet, each with a slash 24 mask. So let's go and do that, guys. Let's click on select here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see first and foremost the VPC CIDR block, the classless interdomain routing block. And what I can see is that it's essentially a slash 16 and look at the amount of available IPs. It gives us plenty of IPs. Now what I'm gonna do, the first thing is I'm gonna label this. So I'm gonna say Greg's, Greg's V, PC, virtual private cloud, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my public subnet on the one network, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my private subnet on the two network. Don't worry about this saying that they're overlapping. They're only overlapping at the moment because I haven't changed my private one. Once I click on this to, to make the private one too, that error message will go away. So what I can see now, guys, is I'm launching a VPC, a virtual private cloud, of 10.0.0.0 slash 16. I've got a public subnet of 10.0.1. something, and then I've got a private subnet of 10.0.2. something. And you can see I'm labeling these public and private. I'm also gonna take advantage of using a NAT instance, okay, just to show you what this looks like. And when I click NAT instance instead of NAT gateway, what I'm actually doing is I'm taking control. So a NAT instance allows us to select the instance type, whether I want to select a key pair to SSH potentially into it later. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my NAT instance, I'm gonna keep it as T2 Nano, that's absolutely perfect. So you'll also notice, guys, that I've got 251 available addresses and 251 available addresses. You might be saying, why don't I have 256? Because it's a slash 24. But remember, AWS, it actually reserves five IPs in each subnet. So again, why does it do that? It, it, it basically reserves five addresses. So again, instead of having 256 available addresses, it has 251 in each available subnet. Now, what we're also gonna see is that in a moment, because I'm launching a NAT instance, 
okay? What's gonna happen is into that public subnet, I'm only gonna have 250 available IP addresses. But let's see that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the VPC and you'll see that, look at all of the things it's doing for me. It's, it's creating an internet gateway, it's creating basically subnets, it's creating at the running NAT instance as we can see at this moment in time. So again, this is gonna take maybe 30 seconds to complete and once it does, I'll be able to see my new VPC connected. So it's just enabling a number of those different things and we can see it's now done. So I'm gonna click on the OK button here and what I'll be able to see now, guys, is I'll be able to see, and here it is, that at the moment the default VPC is selected, but I'm not interested in this one anymore. I'm interested in my new VPC, Greg's VPC. And what I can see from this is I can see a lot of information by pulling this up and by taking a look. I can see the IPv4 CIDR range, this classless interdomain routing, it's a slash 16. I can see that the root table it's connected to at the moment. I can even see the network access control list that this virtual private cloud is connected to. Okay, so again, um, plenty to look at there, but what I'm gonna go down to straight away is I'm gonna have a look at my subnets because I'm gonna see have we created my public and private subnets with those subnets in mind. So here we can see, guys, we've got two subnets created. I've got a private subnet, and we know that the range that we use for the private subnet, we can see was this 10.0.2 network, and we can see that the public subnet was basically 10.0.1 network. So I can see that this has indeed come true. Um, also guys, remember I mentioned that whole idea of the NAT um, instance going into my public subnet? So instead of having 251 addresses like my private subnet, I indeed only have 250 available to me now. If I scroll over, I can see which avail availability zone my public and private subnets are in. So in this case, it's US East 1D. Okay. Um, also, what I can do, guys, is I can take a look at something really important. I can take a look at the root tables. So I'm looking at my public subnet at the moment. And what I'm expecting to see is I'm expecting to see any instances that are launched into this public subnet should be able to root out and back in traffic to the global internet. So what I should have is I should have a basically connection to an internet gateway. So if I click on my root table, I should be able to see this. So sure enough, as I see this, the first route I see is the local route. So this is the VPC destination network. So I'll be able to communicate with other instances in this VPC, but also I can see there's a default route in here signified by this route here, 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 forward slash zero, showing me that if my instances in this particular subnet wish to communicate with anyone outside of this 10 network, they go out through the internet gateway. And this is like the doorway out to the internet. Okay, think of this as our gateway, our router in a normal typical network. From a private standpoint, we won't see that there's a connection to the internet gateway. What we'll actually see is we're gonna see basically that there's a connection to what's called our NAT instance. So again, if I want to route out to the internet, I'd have to go through my NAT instance. We'll also see that there's gonna be a local route in here. So let's click on this and indeed, let's see, we've got our local route of, for the VPC, but also you'll notice here, guys, we've got a default route, but look where it's pointing to. It's pointing to this NAT instance. If I click on that, we can actually see this. This will bring us into our EC2 management console. So again, this is gonna bring us in to show us this EC2 instance. And again, here it is, guys. We can see that this is our NAT instance. Now, again, something really important that we, can, we, we should notice here. Because when I went through the VPC wizard, one of the attributes it said was to apply an elastic IP address. And what this is, it's basically this IP address. This IP address here, guys, is going to stick to my instance, okay? So in other words, if I was to shut down this instance and start it back up, it would retain this IP address. So we can see this IP address has got an IP address ending in 189. How can I prove that? Well, if I go here and I look at my elastic IPs, guys, have a look. I've got this elastic IP that will end in 189, the same IP address. Okay, 
back in a moment guys because I can see that it's just logged me out of the console. So let's um, very quickly, let's go back into our um, educate portal. So again, this is a good time guys, if for example after a certain amount of time what will happen is that it will automatically log you out. So what I'm going to do is, I was right in the middle of showing you something, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on my starter account again and I'm going to pick up where we left off. So this happens, um, but again, what I would just assure you to do is just save your AWS um, Educate link in your favorites, for example, so that you can get straight back in here like what I've just done. So let's go back to our dashboard where we left off, and I was just talking to you about these elastic IPs. So again, these can be very good, for example, if, for example, something crashes, you could move that public IP address onto another node. Hi guys, join me for part two where we're going to continue this story. Thank you.